Do you know what's interesting about Tesla? The huge rises come back when the world economy almost went down. And that's what people will remember about it. Whether you're in for the long run or the short term flips, it's hard to overlook the perceived potential of this major player swimming in these exciting waters. Whether you love, hate, or doubt it, Tesla remains one of the biggest names in the financial market and the mainstream. Very few were able to imitate its comeback or its rise into fame after the doubts back in 2019 and to convince the market at large that a company making expensive cars with highly polluting metals is the answer to our problems. And yet it succeeded doing so and created one of the biggest bullish surge in recent memory. Nevertheless, the uncertainties around the currencies, inflation, political and geopolitical stabilities have all blurred the market's capacity to remain optimistic. And while waiting for the EVs to save the world, many are now simply hoping to survive and save their own wallets. Over the past few years, if there were anything that has significantly altered our perception of what the reality is about and shaking up a lot of our presumptions, few things have done more damage than the change in the labor market and the ongoing inflation. Many people lost their source of income. Others are now fearing about losing theirs after seeing their once flourishing companies overhiring during the pandemic and double down the other way around in order to co overcompensate for their mistakes. Millions of people are now navigating these uncertainties of disappearing labor demand and the spikes in inflation. Stay-at-home policies were certainly not cheap, and at the end of the day, the collective had to foot the bill, no matter how unevenly done it has been. Simply put, money is harder to be made, and even those who have some um, are quickly losing them. So, taking our affairs into our own hands should be the first step towards our financial freedom, and finding the golden goose is the quest of many. Tesla, in difference from many other stocks, has been an actual golden goose for people who have held it in 2019 or before. So this is why Tesla has remained on top of most people's shortlist. Not only to profit from the price fluctuations, but to read the bigger picture through its movements. And in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into Tesla and see what's the best action given the current circumstances. Before the video continues, I just want to take a moment to thank you for coming to my channel and hope that you're going to enjoy your stay and to come back for more content. If you like what you see, please consider to like, subscribe, and check out my channel for playlists of the companies I cover. With that being said, I hope you're going to enjoy today's video, and let's get started. Over the past few days, Tesla has been priced at around $200, which, you know, kind of continues on its slightly more bullish price action trends, at least in the short run compared to the previous price action trends. There were lots of ups and downs following the multiple splits that Tesla had over the past few years, which were also its most glorious ones by far. Um, the market suddenly discovered or pretended to discover the potentials of a previously niche sector. At the moment, the market is reacting to like the sales number of this infamous Cybertruck, and FOMO is probably one of the main reasons why we're seeing like a push of $10 or more of increase. There are lots of reasons that may explain why overall, over the past year or two, Tesla is having a hard time. The market has been expecting more positive catalysts when the company was releasing somewhat mixed signals. The global market has entered into recessions and uncertainties when cars are only needed when there are peace and stability. Rare earths are being qualified as highly toxic and challenging to extract, not to mention the humanitarian concerns in many countries they come from. EVs are still too highly priced for mass adoptions, especially when they're cheaper hybrid cars or cheaper EVs from traditional manufacturers, all priced at a much lower market cap. There could be more subjective reasons as well, um, I'm going to go through them quickly here. For example, the influence of Elon Musk, uh, the macroeconomic cycles, narrative shifts, and so on. We will come back to these later on. Many of those reasons may explain why Tesla has often sold off when it comes to 
like close to the $200 psychological level, when it's relatively high baseline, is often seen as a natural barrier um, for going even further because people would prefer to take profit and to safeguard their capital in those uncertain times. And by uncertain, I don't always mean like open war. Of course, there are wars around the world. Um, but I would argue that a lot of people want to safeguard their capital. And that was the first, like that was the reason why they came into the market in the first place, right? That's why people went to the EV niche a uh, few, like three years ago, four years ago. Not necessarily because they collectively believed that EV is going to take over the world. So when there's enough of them who think that, okay, you know what? I've had my time in uh, in the EV market and it's and right now there might be like better options to safeguard their money. Uh, it's only a matter of time before they collectively pull out exactly like the same ones who flocked in to Tesla four years ago to protect their capital. So what the current price action is telling us is that Tesla is going through a consolidation phase um, after many years of you know, high growth. The previous catalysts might have worn out and the new ones were still waiting for them. I don't think that the Cybertruck thing is what we're hoping for. Okay, I think that uh, if we need to see Tesla going to like $300, $500, we need to see something that's going to be much more significant. For example, can Tesla diversify itself? Can the AI component that Elon Musk has been uh, dangling in front of our eyes, can that be in integrated into Tesla? So these are all things um, that deserve some thoughts. The financial data released by Tesla on a quarterly and annual basis are certainly significant in terms of their importance regarding the company's outlook and stock price. But given the characteristics of Tesla, the company doesn't only depend on numbers or actually it depends on stories. So with that being said, they still serve as a safeguard for the baseline. And over the past few quarters, things could certainly have been better in that regard. They are still making a net profit, which was the main reason why Tesla became suddenly such a highly valued company to begin with. Um, but its profit margin and cash flows are getting worse or have been getting worse on a year to year basis. Profitability is probably the most significant financial figure um, because it is symbolic. It means, you know, with like significance that go way beyond the rational scope. And also, if we think about it, because Tesla is such a large company, its well-being does carry a lot of weight for the rest of the industry. So if Tesla makes money, this will often be viewed as representative of how the outlook of the EV sector is. Because let's be honest, if even Tesla doesn't make money, how do you think the lucid the Rivian of this world will be doing, let alone the Molin and the Faraday futures? In fact, I kind of expect FFIE um, to go bust in the near future, right? A company that, let, let's also be honest, should never have gone public in the first place. SPACs are really just, you know, um, magic stuff. You know, like, like, they really make your dream come true. Like, companies that wouldn't be able to go public otherwise, if they go the, if they use the SPAC route back in 2020, SPAC meaning, I think it's a um, special purpose um, acquisition company or s s something, something of that along those lines. Um, so really, I would say that if Tesla is doing well, at least you can say that it provides a certain um, base basis for the expectation about how the EVs are going to do in general for the years to come. Another thing to watch out for is the growth. Tesla is one of the most highly valued companies in the world. And that's not because of the amounts of cars that it sells, because if we were basing off that, then it's going to be, you know, valued similarly to a Toyota or a Ford or a GM. But it's not. It's valued like a Silicon Valley unicorn. 
So the ratio of profit to its equity is currently very high compared to many other like car manufacturers in the world. People come for Tesla's potential to grow exponentially compared to where things are at the moment. In a way, those pouring in money in Tesla are buying the Tesla to become and not the Tesla that already is. This is why any decrease, not only in the you know the current profitability, but just in the growth rate, will affect the company's market cap. If it's below um, like the, the usual consensus, then the company might have some problems. So financial figures of Tesla will always have a significant degree of importance. Of course it will. It's not going to predict the future, but it can justify the current share cost. It can, it can kind of be used by the market at large to say, oh, you know what? Yeah, the numbers are bad, so let's sell. Or, oh, the numbers are good, so let's buy. Because I want to buy anyway, or, I don't, uh, or because I want to take profit off uh, Tesla anyway. Right? They're just waiting for this excuse to execute uh, their decision. So for a stock that still lives off a lot of momentum, we will need more than just decent financial figures uh, to keep the price high. Of course, most people interested in Tesla would not be making any decision based on financial statements. In fact, few people ever read them, right? It's almost like it's already a hassle to just go through uh, Google Finance in order to look at those numbers. Because what we're looking for is the evolution of the market dynamics. In other words, most of us buying Tesla don't expect to get rich on its dividends, but the quick appreciation of its share price. We we want to buy into the success story that's going to keep successing. It's going to keep trending off on like any ongoing narratives about energy transitions, alternative, you know, mobility solutions, AI technologies what have you. The appeal of those narratives may be the advancement of, um, you know, the capability of technologies, but also, you know, these narratives are very important to keep feeding our collective idea that Tesla's market cap formula should be different compared to many other traditional, um, you know, auto manufacturers. So, Tesla began with a pretty bold statement about zero emission vehicles more than a decade ago. And for many years, you know, people have been skeptical for exactly the, I would say the right reasons. Rare earth is highly polluting. Um, The countries that where you can mine the rare earth are not always the ones that care about labor laws the most. In fact, speaking of which, you may also argue that Elon is not the type of person who cared the most about, you know, labor laws or that kind of stuff. If you don't believe me, just take a quick look at um, what's going on. I think in Sweden, right, they had like a few, they had like a huge strike and um, Elon was just doing the obnoxious. So anyway, th- this is why I, I would say that... Um, we got to be, we should have been careful with this stock. But because back in 2020, it was for a point, one of the only beacons of hope for people who have money in the equities market. So everybody just jumped in, right? So this is why um, I would say it got to a point where when the company was almost about to get sold, or at least they were trying to, um, before the break-even point has been reached in 2020, and then the surge, and then the rest is history, it coincided with announcements of many countries deciding to ban the sale of new combustion engines um, after a certain number of years. And in my case, it has been 2030, I believe. So, there you go. This mentality has been able to establish itself pretty deeply within the investment and trading community um, for the past few years. Because for for a period of time, if you simply mention EV, you're golden. People are going to give you billions of dollars. So 
they were not investing, they were really just fleeing onto the what's glittering, right? The market being a self-fulfilling prophecy, that as well has like made this possible. Because in the at the end of the day, what makes a stock um like really surge compared to others? Supply and demand. Right? The share price of Tesla reflects the optimism at the time, which was absolutely to the fullest extent. So even when the market started to doubt about the relevance of the sector in the long run, when there are more investment options for to, to like park your money safely somewhere, even when an increasing number of people talk about it like an industrial chain instead of a Silicon Valley unicorn, Tesla does benefit from a far more indulgent, patient, and richer fan base. What this means is that Compared to many other companies that also produce EVs, you know, I can name a few, Fisker, Rivian, Nikola, Molen, or Lucid, um, their share price have mostly collapsed. And, you know, they haven't really stood the test of time. And Tesla is simply having a relative sell-off. So for me, this is a very important appeal of this stock because it has enough gravity of its own to hold on to like accumulated gains over the past few years. So instead of melting like snow from like many other companies, um, Tesla has been able to keep for the most part its gains. It's a major player in the sector that absorbs almost all the glories when, whenever there is any and most or many of the backfires, but not all of them. Like for example, we haven't yet seen any sort of major scandals about Tesla coming up, right? Of course, they might have faulty parts, but um, sometimes I wonder if we are also collectively just choosing to close our eyes because there have been reports saying that Tesla has been like piling up cars that they, they cannot really sell in like empty parking lots. So what do we do about this? Nothing. Is it going to have an impact? Not if we collectively decide that it doesn't matter. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is the sort of thing that um, that might only be possible with Tesla. So right now, the global markets are facing a complex interplay of factors that have the potential to significantly influence the equities worldwide. In this speculative analysis, I believe that the consequences of the global inflation, surging commodity prices, and decline quantitative easing, as well as the rise of inflation rates or interest rates, plus the geopolitical instabilities, are going to play a significant part. The increasing inflation rate has been putting pressures across the globe, threatening the purchasing power, raising the input costs, and impacting corporate profitability. Companies operating internationally may face challenges in managing rising production costs and also to sustain profit margins. Those dynamics could trigger market volatility as investors adjust their risk return expectations. The upward trajectory of commodity prices, including energy, metals, agricultural products, have been having far-reaching implications for various sectors of the global equities market. The companies heavily dependent on these commodities may experience squeezed profit margins, potentially affecting stock valuations and investor sentiment. The reduction or the end of QE's quantitative easing measures by the central banks worldwide may have resulted in reduced market liquidity. So this in turn could lead to higher borrowing costs for companies seeking capital, which may also discourage investment activities or will. The elevated market volatility plus the reduced investors' appetite may also continue to occur. Now, the central banks around the world are tackling this delicate situation of balancing the inflation rates with the economic stability and, if possible, growth. Central banks opted for aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflations, 
borrowing costs for companies have been rising, which has also slowed down business activities and also fueling the market's volatility in terms of the equity prices. Now, ongoing geopolitical tensions, including trade disputes, political uncertainties, and social unrests, will inject an additional element of volatility into the global markets. Investors may adopt a cautious approach, shifting towards safer assets, impacting the equities. Additionally, the escalating conflicts may disrupt supply chains, negatively impacting the performance of international companies. Given the interconnectedness of global markets, the aforementioned factors have reverberating effects on the U.S. equities market. Companies with significant exposure to international market may face a lot of headwinds resulting from the economic slowdowns, disrupting the supply chains and the currency fluctuations. But nevertheless, the U.S. market is known for its resilience and the diverse sectors may attract investors seeking safe havens. So really, the current landscape is characterized by global inflation, surging commodity prices, surging commodity prices, reduced quantitative easing, rising central bank inflation rates, geopolitical instabilities, and also ongoing lack of certainty regarding growth. While the U.S. market may exhibit relative strength due to the safe haven status, it's going to remain interconnected with the global economic landscape. For long-term investors, these conditions may offer opportunities to identify undervalued companies with strong fundamentals and international diversification. With that being said, short-term trades should be approached with caution because of the increased volatility and uncertainty. And also, we should be careful when assessing individual companies, sectors, or regions. So having said all this, what should be our opinion towards Tesla? What should, what should we do about it? Should we do anything about it, in fact? So let's begin with the question, is this a decent company to buy to begin with, regardless of the short-term volatilities? Because overall, it's always going to reflect like its inherent values, right? Personally, I believe that Tesla is a good company if you believe that EV is here to stay. If you believe that this sort of solution to, to like environmental pollution is the way to go. You know, that if, um, if you believe that we're going to be able to resolve the rare earth, if you believe that like Tesla is, is going to be able to increase its profit margin that it can actually start to generate a lot more volumes than it currently does then yes then like it's um it's something that you can definitely buy in is now a good entry point i personally believe that it's a pretty good entry point right because the market has been um trying to go below like 180 for some time now and it seems like the the vast majority of people who are stakeholders in this, they don't want to short sell the, the stock. For the simple reason that if they do, they don't know how much the, the loss is gonna be. Whereas even if they even if they win, you know, it's going to be between 180 and zero, whereas the potential loss is between 180 and the infinite. And you don't know what's going to happen with a company that is inherently almost like a big meme stock, if you know what I'm saying. Like, it's one of those stocks that people like to talk about, people like to play around with, that people like to trade as well. So it is going to be a fairly um, eventful and volatile title to own. So with all that being said, I do believe that the worst has been passed for um, for Tesla. The worst is behind us. Now, for holding period, I would say that this is definitely something that you should hold 
in the long run. It's not the kind of stock that you want to just pump and dump. In fact, you cannot really pump and dump a stock like Tesla. The maximum exposure that I would recommend is around 10% of your portfolio's capital spread over a number of months, preferably over the 12 month period. And you want to hold this um, for a number of years as well. I don't know if I said this before, but like two to three years seems to be a good spot for me. With that being said, if you don't believe that EV is here to stay, if you believe that alternative options are going to come, if you believe that, um, if you worry about a potential shift in the narratives and Tesla will not be the benefactor or the winner of these changes, then by all means, um, look for other kinds of more suitable options. Because this will mean that you will not be comfortable holding Tesla in the long run. Like, for example, I have stocks in my portfolio that have lost more than 40% of their um, of their value, but it doesn't mean that I'm, I will panic and just ditch them, right? I have the luxury of patience, and you should also structure your portfolio in such a way that any sort of stock that collapses, any sort of group of stocks that collapse, is not going to affect you mentally. 